Welcome back to Road Race Retro. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. So you'll have probably noticed in the older videos or the ones I've done in recent times, I've tried to get a little bit of this car in the background just to kind of slowly introduce it to the channel. Um, obviously, you don't need me to bore you and tell you what it is, I'm sure you already know. Obviously, Sierra Saf Cosworth. This is a two-wheel drive for me. Um, when I was growing up, this is like a not, not a pin-up car, but yeah, I had Ferraris on my wall, but in my area of the northeast, when I was young and I was just starting to get into cars like, well, when I was a kid to be fair, like 9, 10, 11 year old, this is what I was seeing on the road, the cars that I saw getting drove fast and getting drove erratic and aggressively was always the Cosmos, so we'd always see them flat out, and I took a big interest in them from a young age, um, I did buy a few, quite a few years ago, and in the last kind of 18 months I've been I'd see a team run having a look at the market and thinking, you know, I will buy one. And then COVID hit and the prices just went absolutely mental. So I just scanned the market for a little bit, said I would buy the right car if it came up. It has to, had to be a two-wheel drive only. Um, but colour-wise, I'm not going to lie, I would have preferred magenta. That's the colour that I initially wanted first. But obviously a white SAF. Um, it holds a bit of prestige as well for an old-school car. So this car itself I was quite lucky with. I actually got this car from a local chap who was just, I think it was about 50 mile away, 40 mile away from me. He'd actually had this car, believe it or not, for 15 years. So I did well to buy it. It's covered a genuine 60,798 miles, which is obviously mega low. It's had four keepers, and he just basically decided he was gonna let it go, and it was kind of the right place, right time, I guess. I went up, had a bit of a look. Um, it's not to my standard just yet, but in terms of what these colours can be like, it is a, a good starting point. It does need some work on the underside, typical to most Cosworth, so I need to get to that. Um, but genuinely, I absolutely love it. I have drove it a couple of times. I don't mind being honest with you. Obviously, these Cosworths are still a fast car. However, times have moved on. So the two times that I've driven it, I went out um, and I had a bit, a bit sport, a bit mess on with the 335 diesel F31 Touring. Uh, it was obviously mapped up, big exhaust, the lad had his kids in the back with two baby seats and I got absolutely dusted. So it just goes to show how much times have moved on. In terms of the setup, obviously I'll cut the next clip and I'll show you under the bonnet. But um, a genuine car for me and something I'm, I'm very, very proud of owning. It's definitely a good investment and I think this one's going to stay for some time. I have bought some little bits for it which I'll talk you through. There isn't going to be any driving today, but it's just an introduction into the two-wheel drive SAF. So I'll just give like a little walk around of the car and show you obviously what we're looking at. We'll lay it bare and show you the bits I'm not happy with. Uh, it does have plus points and negative points. As you can see, it is a nice, level, straight, clean car. Um, down to the sill lines, obviously the clips are missing. Um, but I've got the sill clips to go on there. We're on TSW wheels at the moment, which I am going to change. I'll get to that in just a second. It didn't come with the ambers in originally, so we've popped the ambers back in there. We've got a bit of sag on the front bumper, as you can see. It looks like it's got a bit of a sad face going on at the minute. So we need to sort that out. In terms of the engine bay, I'm actually really happy. I don't think I'm going to do a lot in here. Um, we've got a little tiny wave from the turbo. Needs a new gasket in there. But in terms of setup, it's running the famous stage three. So this is the setup that everybody went for back in the day if they could. T34 turbo, RS500 intercooler, set of greens, the injectors, and 330 odd horsepower. I think that was 333 horsepower. As you can see, the bay is quite tidy. The turbo is quite recent. It's had all of its belts done as well. But genuinely, a tidy bay for the age of the car. It's in decent enough condition. Obviously, just kept it on trickle charge. 
But um, I'm not going to do a lot in there, I don't think. I think I'm just going to leave that as it is for the time being. As I said, the panels are lovely on the car. It's a very straight thing. No rust around the sunroof or anything like that. So, again, it's in good nick. Um, the bonnet I'll get to at the moment. Round to the back of the car. As you can see, obviously, all Dave bits off his bloody P1, which we're still on with. Um, round to the back, that famous uh, four-inch outward roll Scorpion system. Obviously, the RS Cosworth badge, which to me is timeless, something I always look for in the old-school blue, blue Ford Oval. Obviously, 89 on an F-plate shears as well. But the arches, as you can see, are getting close. The arches, obviously, where they normally suffer, are absolutely bang on. So I'm dead happy with those. Um, same on the passenger side, there's nothing really else to show you. Um, I'll walk you around and talk you through the negatives, the bits that I've seen that kind of annoy me. So, in the boot corners, I know I'm being fussy here, but hey ho, a little bit of a few bubbles starting to form there. It's the same either side, so we need to get to those and get those sort of. There's a few little tiny bubbles on the boot lid. Again, I'll have to go in close, but you can see obviously next to the boot lock, and there's a few little spiders' webs down here. And obviously at the bottom but for this kind of car i think it wants to be not mint because obviously i need to be able to use it i don't want to ruin it and make it too nice to the point where i don't want to drive it but nevertheless it does need a little bit still obviously the front of the bonnet is the same way it's had stone chips obviously those are spiders web so they need some work or the bonnet needs painting um it is on its original wings as well so we have still got the ford stamps in the wings which is nice same on both sides Normally, if they've been replaced, obviously, you lose the Ford stamps. Same on the leading edge of the bonnet, the same as the boot. Again, these are only tiny little bits, but these do need addressing, definitely. Uh, it's obviously had a red wing mirror on at some point, because obviously the paint's coming off there, so we need to get to that. Um, I don't know if the camera will pick this up. This is the worst thing about the car that really bugs me. So, I'm hoping that focuses enough. What they've done is, they've had an RS sticker here or an RS badge and they've actually painted over it and lacquered it which to me is mad and it, it, it really gets me so I need to sort that out it's only on one side as well which makes it even worse so I need to get to that um, but same obviously passenger side very clean very tidy uh, for me this is the bit that I like is the trim I'll just open this door a little bit better cloth I also wanted the cloth trim. I know a lot of people like the raven leather, but I absolutely adore the cloth. And when you get cloth, it's normally hard to find it in this kind of condition. So if you just look at the bolsters, those are original as well, not re-trimmed. Really it's had no foam in. They look like 60,000 mile seats. They're just in very, very nice condition. Again, very, very like these are solid. When you sit in the seat, it holds you nice and tight. So you can see the general condition of those seats in the back as well. Um, are just in mint condition, they're lovely. It has got the usual headline and sag again, that's another thing to get to in time. So we will get to that. But even little things like the armrest, like look at the condition of it. I mean, it's always the little details that make these cars, I would have thought. At the moment, we have got white clocks in. Now, I know a lot of people don't like those white clocks, but for me, personally, again, it's a period thing. When I always look at the RS stuff when I was a kid, they always had white dials in them. So I actually think, for me personally, with it being my own car, I think I'm going to keep those white dials. I think I'm going to leave them. This needs tidying up. Obviously, the old owner was petrified of the car overheating, so we've got a manual fan switch in there as well. Um, things I like about this car, like it's got little modern touches. So the standard head unit is still in here. Um, but a friend of mine who owns a company called Base Mechanics up in Newcastle, basically put a sound system in this car and there's a bluetooth box behind the standard head unit and you just connect your phone via bluetooth and play obviously all your playlists we've got a little um flat sub in the back all of the door speakers are uprated as well and um all of the rear shelf speak speakers are uprated again just concentrate on the trim the door cards and everything are mint and it's stuff like that that's very very hard to replace and get right so with it being an original car in terms of its interior that was a big plus point for me um, but that's a brief look at the car um, service history I'm not going to bore you and go through all of the service history but the service history is great and all of the miles tally up in the original Ford owner service book as well 
Um, in fact, I might show you the Ford service build because that's quite interesting. But obviously, the TSW wheels, it's on Triple Eight R semi slicks at the minute. Um, these TSW wheels, people do still like them, and they are very period. But what I've done is I've decided to make this cause with the way that I always wanted it as a kid. So, um, again, the ones I've always seen in recent times that have looked amazing have had one certain set of wheels on, and I have actually bought a set of those wheels. So, in the next clip, I'll basically show you the wheels that I've chose for the car. But that's it anyway, so I hope you all like it. Uh, I will show you the service book in the next clip. And we hope, and obviously this should be right and ready to go kind of April, May, and I'll go through obviously the work we're doing on the floor. Um, it needs a tune as well. It's running very rich at the moment. Um, it's basically, it's actually burnt the back bumper where it's been chucking flames out, so a lot looks cool on boost. It's maybe not so good for the engine running too rich at some points, so we need to get to that. But I'll show you the wheels anyway. Now wheels, which wheels to decide to go for? I'm not gonna lie, I'm a fool. I've looked at about 500 pictures on the internet, different color cosmos, different wheel choices. You know yourself when you're in the car, there's a ball going, you've gone to Google, you've typed the car in, you've typed the wheels in, and then you've had a look and you've made your mind up. I was stuck between my second choice, which was Comfortive MO6s. I saw them on numerous cars, they're very motorsport style looking wheel, they're quite aggressive. I feel like the suit the lines of the cars with, but I wanted something a little bit more subtle and something that was going to keep the car looking really clean with the white. So this is what I decided to go for. Do you know? Use my thing different. If you do, leave some comments in the comment section. Opinions are always good for me, whether they're positive or negative. If you don't like them, that's cool with me. That is what I've decided to go for, um, which are the THs. I think the TH8882, I think the model is. Um, again, as per previous part, these were supplied by Chris and Safety Performance, who's a, a comparative dealer. We've got a nice deal on the wheels. They come with all the fitment stuff as well. They come with bolts. Um, they also come with center caps. And we have ordered some rubber for these wheels as well. So hopefully the second video should be a nice video where we can roll in to get the rubber on and get the wheels fitted. Um, I hope you all like the wheels as much as I do. I personally think that they will actually make this car. Um, it should be quite decent on. And again, it will keep the clean look of the cars with obviously white against like, a, a powder or polished silver always looks well. So we'll cut it off there for now. Obviously this is the end of the introduction of the Cosworth. Um, I hope you all like the car and I hope you all look forward to progress.